Okay guys, if you're looking for five pro tips in how to build control panels, just like this one here, check out this video. They're nuggets taken from my control panel building training course. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. First stage, panel building. What I'd recommend is start with the doors. Let's mark out the doors for those door plates, get all the markings done get it all drilled and get everything fit. The reason I'd recommend starting at this point, if you do mess up and it does happen, and it'll probably happen to me on this project, Sod's Law, but if that does happen, at least it's at the start of the project. So you can get a new door ordered and we can then continue with the back plate and the rest of it, like the wiring and whatnot. So if you do mess up at this early stage, it's not gonna stop us from moving forward. So yeah, start with the door. Um, Hopefully we won't have any cock-ups, but at least if we do, we can continue with other things whilst that door is being ordered and delivered to us. There's a few ways we can do the labeling. So the first one would just be to use like a standard handheld label printer, like a brother printer. We could also use a proper label printing machine, similar to the one that you can get from Wago. And then also you might have seen on higher end panels that you also can get those label brackets where you can clip plastic printouts of the components into the brackets and they slide back and forth. So yeah, there's a combination of those that we can use. And initially, just for the terminal blocks, I'm just gonna use the clip-in number method just to show you that as another option as well. Also, another thing that I tend to do is certainly on relays is I usually just put a strip of electrical tape and just write on the relays one through to whatever number rather than doing initial printout straight away for them because sometimes you might need to add or remove relays so i tend to just finalize the relay numbering and labeling right at the end now before we get into this i'm going to let you in on a little secret and that secret is that it does matter the order in which you wire the panel. If you want it to be easy and look neat and professional, then there's definitely a specific order to follow. And I've obviously found this out the hard way through the last several years or so, building panels in different orders to find out the most optimum way of doing it. And it really does matter. One, it, it looks a lot more professional, and two, it does actually make fault finding, maintenance, servicing, changing hardware, changing components a lot easier. So just a quick one, guys. Firstly, does anyone know what RTFM stands for? If you do, let me know, post it in the comments. Secondly, if you're looking for free training in how to build control panels, just like this one here, visit the link in the description and we will send you some free training really hit home just how important red penning schematics actually is. So as you can see, red pen. So when people refer to red penning, it means kind of what it says on the tin, but annotating, modifying schematics. And I'm just thinking, you've got to, you've got to really be on the ball when you're working through these schematics because designers do make mistakes, things do change, and it's the person who's wiring the panel who ultimately has the final say on how things are. So obviously in this case, I'm the designer and I'm the panel builder. But when I come back to modifying the designs, I'm not gonna remember what I've done. So I need to be very clear in my annotations what I've done in the panel. So then when I go and do these modifications, that they all add up. Because what we don't want is one for them to be missed. So later down the line, someone's on site and the drawings don't match what's in the panel. I've seen this firsthand before. It baffles me how this happens, how small businesses usually don't have proper procedures in place to ensure that proper handover 
is happening between designers, builders, and back again if there are multiple people in the company. So that's one thing. You don't want modifications being missed or not updated. And also you obviously don't want them to be wrong. Again, if someone's out on site, something's missed, something's wrong, it's just gonna, you're just making life difficult for future engineers. And it's most likely that those future engineers are gonna be part of your business. Business owners, make sure you've got a procedure for the handover. And even if you're not handing over, maybe a procedure is going a little bit too far, but at least really taking your time and thinking about it, not getting distracted when you are red penning the schematics and making sure that they are clear enough. So in 10 days time, when you come back to modifying the designs in the CAD software, it's clear enough for you to understand. And yeah, if you're a business, with people in different departments, like you've got a design engineer, you've got a panel builder, you've got a installation team or commissioning team. All three of these departments are gonna be working to these drawings and with the control panel. So it's so important that they are all on the same page, on the same revision, and they're updated correctly. So yeah, just an important point that came to mind as I was working through this build uh, that I just wanted to communicate to you guys. So guys, I just want to give you a bit of advice. And this kind of goes for every section, but certainly this section where we're wiring a lot of the contacts of the relays. And there's a few options. It might be the first pole. It might be the second pole. It might be going to the common of either of those poles. It might be going to normally open or it might be going to the normally closed. So there's like six different options when we're wiring into the relays on the contact side. And this is where there's a lot of potential for mistake. When I go to do the testing later on, on, this is usually where I find that I've created problems for myself because I've had a lapse of concentration and I've wired the wrong cable into the wrong contact of the relay or wrong terminal of the contact side of the relay. So it really does just pay to take a little bit more time and double check where you're putting cables on this part of the wiring because there is a lot of potential for making mistakes on this part whilst doing the relay. So just thought I'd point that out to you guys.